Hi, welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Insight Astrology. This is Christina. If you get a Sagittarius rising, Sagittarius moon or Sagittarius sun, this is your March 2023 astrology forecast. All right, guys, this is big. This is tremendous. This is something what's, you know, like life altering, life changing for the collective. Two of the planets going to change signs, Saturn, the social planet, which it takes for it like 29 years to go around the zodiacal cycle and it's gonna ingress Pisces. It have been here 29 years ago and it's going to station here, take uh, going back and forth and, and be in Pisces for two and a half years. And the other thing, look at Scorpio. Scorpio, uh, not Scorpio, Pluto is leaving Capricorn and it's going Aquarius, and it's going to ingress actually March 23rd. Aquarius is humanitarian. Aquarius is unconventional. Why Capricorn is really power-oriented. So right now, we're going to go from here, which is like the power was centered in just some kind of reach uh, uh, people's uh, hand, and right now it's going to go to the collective. It's going to go to the tribes. So not necessarily we're going to have governments like it's going to be controlled by only one person. It could be like different tribes the next 20 years, you will see. And then they co control their own um, uh, tribes, right? Okay, Sagittarius, let's see what's going to happen for you. So March 7th, we start with a Virgo full moon at 16 degrees, and it's going to take place in your 10th house. That's your career. Uh, actually, um, it will try Uranus, the planet of unexpected. Uranus is unconventional, uh, not traditional. Uh, it's rebel, it's chaos, it's the tornadoes, the earthquake, the digital currency, the lightning, the energy stocks, uh, you know, and it's going to be, and it is in your sixth house for a while, and it's going to be here for a while. Uh, the, your sixth house is actually uh, the house of labor that is service for others. That is your rental properties. That is your animal, small animal, all right? So it can bring a sudden change with a lovely positive outcome and it can get you a new job that you have been craving for a while. It can also bring in a new tenant or a rental property maybe, or you can have a new roommate. It could also indicate a completion in your career actually at your job. So no, in your career, because the full moon is completion. It's when the moon and the sun are uh, opposing each other in heaven. And it is a completion over there. You might going to finish a task or, you know, you, you don't belong there anymore and you want to actually uh, approach another avenue, pursue something different right now. So yes, it can indicate a completion in your career. You might give up something. Okay. The full moon actually uh, transiting, as I said, your 10th house. And 10th house, not only your career, but it's also talking about your recognition, reputation, business dealing, and political power as well. And uh, it could actually interfere a little bit uh, with your career. You might have some kind of change of heart. You might want it to pursue a political uh, power, but right now you say, you know, but I'm not going to go with that stress anymore. Something that needs a lot of commitment and responsibility, but does not satisfy you financially. And, and you will be just letting go of. So on the other hand, the sun is in your fourth house and it will bring a new investment opportunity in real estate. Uranus trine, uh, the sun, so, and sextile the moon. No, actually, Uranus trine the moon and sextile the sun. I'm sorry. Yes. So it is also very positive, okay? Because you can get multiple benefits from here. And you can get benefits from a colleague, you know, they can help you. Uh, or you can uh, get benefits from a roommate or from a rental property or because of you are service for others, it could indicate like you will get back the, the help right now. For example, if you helped in your community, because Uranus is community really. And, and if you helped your tribe right now, they are willing to help back to you. 
So, okay, let's talk about this full moon and the archetype of this full moon. You know, the full moon is in Virgo. So the actually Virgo really loves um, like um, routine and Virgo also very productive. Virgo is an archetype of obligation and actually Virgo loves to heal and serve others and down to earth. Okay, and the ruler of uh, Virgo is the planet Mercury. So the planet Mercury is the lord of this full moon. And the planet Mercury is in Pisces, all right? Look, uh, but it's in full position because it's across Virgo. So it's full. So it's delusional, illusional when it's talking. So it doesn't see the small print. So whenever you sign a contract or whatever, you will need to check if you are buying a house or if you are investing in real estate, or if you are studying real estate and you go for licensing, it could be some kind of mistake because Mercury is, is like uh, not seeing the, the big picture over here. Uh, all right, so what else could uh, happen here? So, you know, we're going to have a stallion because Saturn going to join the same day later on. Uh, Pisces, so we're going to have Saturn, Mercury, Sun, and Neptune in Pisces, and it's going to Put all the emphasis on your fourth house, right? And fourth house matters, which is representing uh, a living situation, ending funerals. Um, it's it's real estate. It's family matters. It's your roots. It's where you came from. Actually, it it could like all right. I want to know actually my family tree. Saturn is old ages. I want to know everyone in my family who who were you know my great grandparents and and everyone. So you can do a family tree with Saturn being here. Um, all right. And then uh, what else I wanted to talk about? All right. So this woman actually squares Mars. Yes. So that is a T-square, right? Mars is over here in Gemini. It's still in Gemini seven months. It's making us exhausted in your relationship, business partnership, legal matters, uh, um, you know, like, like, it is like argument with significant others or partner business partners. Uh, so it's like verbal conflict here. And, you know, it could be something about your family. You don't see everything eye to eye with, with a wife or husband, uh, how to raise a child or, or with an investment. And it could, inf you know, indicate some kind of issue over there. Okay, so... Um, Yes, and then some kind of emotional distress because you are overworked. You need to let go of some kind of work maybe. And can you support uh, your, your living situation? Are you going to be capable to support your family? Perhaps it could be the question here. On the 11th of the month, we will have Juno entering Taurus, your sixth house, and the 16th Venus also going to enter Taurus, the sixth house. So it's going to be a lot of emphasis on your head. Uh, so both are really good and great planets and asteroid, Juno is an asteroid, loyalty, and uh, primarily uh, you can get a job in a health industry, for example, or in, in healing, for example, or in animal shelters, or you can adopt a dog, that would be a great time to adopt an animal. Uh, it's also good actually to take care of your health as well. Uh, if you have anything with uh, sugar uh, issues, you know, insulin intolerance, sugar intolerance, diabetes, this is the time to check it out right now. Um, so move forward, March 19th, Mercury, and then after that, March 20th, the sun going to enter Aries. So we're going to have a stellium in Aries after March. And March uh, 21st, we're going to have the astrological new year, blooming, sprouting, new beginning. And it's going to be zero degrees Aries, which is the word axis. So it's very karmic. It's emphasizing everything in your five, fifth house matter. Fifth house is joy. Fifth house is investment. It's money. It's a lover. It's it's creativity. It's a creative project. Something with your children. So something turning out good with your children. Uh, they're going to, might going to win something. Or you can actually win a lottery or get a prize or, or you know, something with an investment being of a creative project is well received. Or your children get into somewhere where you always wanted them to get in and you will be very, very pleased and happy about that. All right, so... This is favorable. It is positive. 
And then you can gamble, not like crazy. I don't advise that ever, but you know, this is a lot of energy over here, uh, which could be like mm, very welcoming, really welcoming for, for any kind of investment, gambling or lottery ticket. All right, so what else can I... Your book actually could become bestseller if you wrote something. So on the 23rd, Pluto Ingress Aquarius, your third host, it's going to make a life-altering transformative change in your communication, especially in the first two years when it's ingress. So, you know, it's, it's going to be big. Um, you might invest in studying, in technology. You might go into create a school, a workshop, okay? And you will commune with that school. So you might go into do workshops in, or, or you know, um, in different cities, wherever you live. Uh, but it's more, it's, it's short commune. So, you know, like maybe it's just uh, domestic traveling, but you're going to talk on stage and, and, and teach people. Actually, it will be really powerful because it will make your words heard and make you very powerful communicator. And last but not least, let's talk about Mars leaving Gemini. All right. So it was across you guys and it was very powerful. It, it, it's made you angry and argumentative with your spouse, with your significant other. It you know, it, it could have been really, really difficult here with business partners. Um, you always have to stand up for yourself and you had enough, you didn't want to. And, you know, it's going to go to cancer. Cancer is anything with living situation, family and real estate, it holds anything with mortgage. So definitely, if anything was delayed over here a little bit, then when Mars is going in end of March, that's going to be like, all right, I get a mortgage, I get a loan, I, I get something, but I can actually have my family with. So that's indicate an excellent position. And actually, it's really good for resources or, or you know, you might going to come across inheritance or some kind of good insurance payout here. Okay, guys, if you loved my podcast, then please don't hesitate to subscribe. Also share it with your family and friends so they can also benefit from my reading. Then like and also comment below. Comment. Let me know how did it work out for you. I want to learn about you. I want to get to know you. And then another promotion here, my book is out. And that is Let's Talk About That. And my pen name is Uma Kriko, and that is a really, really sentimental name for me. You can read that in my book. And then it's actually about eight house matters. It is everything about sex, death, abortion, uh, reproduction, uh, bullying, uh, racism, you know, uh, all the taboos, but the children needs to maybe hear that from someone and not everybody has a parent there is a lot of orphan there is a lot of people children who lost their uh, parent or they divorced or the parents feel it like it's a taboo and they are uncomfortable to talk about situations and and topics like that afterlife religion and it's a lovely story so please support me and buy my book and actually give me a good review on amazon if you buy it over there it's going to be available on kindle as well all right, guys, thank you so much for your attention. And uh, I see you in April, my friends. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.